Can the United States military industrial establishment really keep a secret? Consider this. In 1943, the neutral press printed some strange news about an apocalyptic experimental American bomb that had destroyed every living thing on a small island during its first test. The facts as reported were not true, but the rumors were based on concrete data or on the first rare leaks that were coming out concerning the frenzied preparation of the super-secret atomic center at Oak Ridge, a kind of science fiction before the proper time. Two years later, vague references to unknown large-scale phenomena, a deafening roar and a column of smoke that had been noted in the desert region of New Mexico, appeared in some Texas and Arizona newspapers. Mass hallucination or a meteor, the military authorities declared brusquely. Then it was learned that precisely at 5.38 a.m. on July 16, 1945, under the code name Trinity, the first American atomic bomb had been detonated on the top of a high steel tower a dozen or so miles from the air base at Alamogordo. We learned of the existence of the A-bomb at the same time the Japanese did, the surprised citizens of the United States exclaimed, and it was perfectly true. These days, rumors abound that this same military-industrial conglomerate has established bases on Mars. Such claims sound like preposterous urban legend nonsense, right? But just like the atomic bomb in 1945, if the defense engineers of those days could build it, would they? Well, of course they did, and in complete secrecy. Now, decades later, here in the dawn of the 21st century, if defense engineers could secretly launch men to Mars, would they? Well, let's examine the evidence and you decide the answer for yourself. In June of 1977, a documentary edition of Science Report was aired on Anglia TV in Britain that examined Alternative 3, an investigation of rumors that scientists had determined that by the early years of the 21st century, the Earth's surface would be unable to support life due to pollution leading to catastrophic climate change. It was proposed that there were three alternatives to assure humanity's survival. Alternative 1. The first involved the detonation of nuclear bombs in the stratosphere in order to allow the pollution to escape into space. Alternative 2. The second alternative was the construction of elaborate underground bases. Alternative 3. The third alternative was to populate a survival colony on Mars. Shortly after this video was aired, it was debunked as a hoax a clever dramatization parading as an investigative news report. However, this fiction was in part based on solid evidence that alternatives 1, 2, and 3 were seriously proposed programs. We had agreed at the Huntsville Conference that there was nothing we could do to cut either world population or the consumption of resources essential for survival on Earth. Alternative 3 was a much more limited option. It was an attempt to ensure that at least some of the human race survived the consequences. We were theorists, not technicians, but we realized we were talking about a kind of space travel which had only appeared in scientific fiction so far. What, you mean go to some other planet? I mean get the hell off this one whilst there's still time. Author, lecturer, researcher Milton William Cooper served as a member of the Office of Naval Security and Intelligence while on duty as a harbor and river patrol boat captain at Da Nang and the Dong Ha River Security Group in Vietnam. William Cooper was awarded several medals for his combat leadership and heroism. In his book, Behold a Pale Horse, Cooper reveals classified Defense Department files to which he had access during his service with naval intelligence. This briefing data confirmed the Alternative 3 scenario. A symposium was held in 1957 which was attended by some of the great scientific minds then living. They reached the conclusion that 
by or shortly after the year 2000, the planet would self-destruct due to increased population and man's exploitation of the environment. By secret executive order of President Eisenhower, MJ-12 scholars were ordered to study this scenario and make recommendations from their findings. MJ-12 confirmed the findings of the scientists and made three recommendations called Alternatives 1, 2, and 3. On May 22, 1962, a space probe landed on Mars and confirmed the existence of an environment which could support life. Not long afterward, the construction of a colony on the planet Mars began in earnest. Today's cities exist on Mars, populated by specifically selected people from different cultures and occupations taken from all over the Earth. A public charade of antagonism between the Soviet Union and the United States has been maintained over all these years in order to fund projects in the name of national defense when in fact we are the closest allies. Curiously, in 1957, the very same year, mentioned in Cooper's classified military files that referenced the Alternative 3 Symposium, a Walt Disney television program entitled Mars and Beyond publicly stated, Today, as we face the serious problems of overpopulation and depletion of natural resources, the possibility of Mars becoming a new frontier is of increasing importance in our plans for the future. Is there any substance to this Alternative 3 urban legend? In 1961, shortly after the discovery of the Van Allen radiation belt that surrounds our planet, Hollywood released Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, a fantastic thriller where the Van Allen belt actually catches fire. To save the planet from roasting, an atomic missile is launched into the belt, extinguishing the blaze. A solution curiously reminiscent of Alternative 1. And today we see our skies laced with chemtrails, used for the alleged purpose of filtering solar radiation because of the depleted ozone layer. Could this be a modern variation of the Alternative 1 objectives? In May 1995, former Defense Department engineer, the late Phil Schneider, revealed, The black budget is a secretive budget that garners 25% of the gross national product of the United States. The black budget currently consumes $1.25 trillion per year. At least this amount is used in black programs, like those concerned with deep underground military bases. Presently, there are 129 deep underground military bases in the United States. Such testimony infers that Alternative 2 is substantial and serious. It's fairly well known that the Defense Department has been building underground facilities even since the days of the Cold War when threat of nuclear exchange with the Soviet Union seemed a clear and present danger. Markings on the huge boring machines clearly reveal their military utility. Obviously, preserving our human genome is a worthy endeavor. Establishing colonies on Mars or other worlds in space as insurance against unforeseen Earth cataclysms or wars seems a humane, noble pursuit. But is such an admirable project convenient cover for darker ambitions? Does a breakaway military-industrial conglomerate entertain plans to occupy Mars and the rest of the solar system in a covert scheme to advance the territorial ambitions of a hidden totalitarian order. Is a secret fraternity of privileged elitists engaged in refashioning humanity into a species of their own invention. How ironic it would be to find we've launched the War of the Worlds scenario in reverse with an aggressive army of human invaders from Earth descending upon the Martians. From his book, UFO Contact from Reticulum, author Wendell Stevens also shared disturbing reference to a secret manned base on Mars. In 1978, William J. Herman, a born-again Christian living in Charleston, South Carolina, became a UFO experiencer. At the time, Herman was deacon of his Southern Baptist Conference Church. After several ongoing UFO contacts with gray aliens, 
Herman received an anonymous phone call warning him to keep silent about his UFO contacts. Mars can support life, human life. It's been proven. The moon once held colonies of scientists, and a probe landed on Mars on May 22, 1962. The Committee at Residence is a joint government and paramilitary technological conglomerate. The CIA is small fry compared to them. God, the KGB is small fry compared to them. They're watching you. Alternative 3. The Committee at Residence. The committee knows the UFOs know about everything. The violations, atrocities, batch consignments, everything. They've tried suppressing UFO data, but it can't be held down anymore. Too much pressure, too much at stake. When the atmosphere vaporizes its shields, all life will perish. Perish, do you hear? Even today, billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk, aside from launching his own sports car to Mars, is calling for establishing that planet as a survival habitat to preserve the human species in case some global holocaust decimates planet Earth. Last century, we had two massive world wars, three if you count the Cold War. I think it's unlikely that we'll never have another world war again. But to hedge against the possibility of global war, Musk emphasized, then we want to make sure that there's enough of a seed of human civilization somewhere else to bring civilization back and perhaps shorten the length of the Dark Ages. I think a moon base and a Mars base that could perhaps help regenerate life back here on Earth would be really important. And to get that done before a possible World War III.